Good afternoon. I'm Ethan Allen, your host on Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks for joining us this Friday afternoon. Uh, we're going to have another uh, in-depth exploration of ocean thermal energy conversion again today. We, we talked about that earlier this week on a different Think Tech show, uh, Think Tech Talks. Joining me today is co-host Ray Starling, energy consultant, energy guru, and Dr. Hans Kroch, who is the, the world's world-renowned expert in OPEC, ocean thermal energy <laughs> conversion. But before we do that, I just I want to talk a little bit and do a little quick demo here of a, a very cool thing that I ran into today, uh, this week, called Dot Lens. It's a group, dotlens.com. They make these tiny little lenses and um, that you can very neatly put onto your telephone, onto your, cam your camera phone. So you can drop the lens, just set it, tap it in place. Oops, it usually should stay right on that lens. And then when you hit your camera setting, this becomes highly magnified. All right, it becomes essentially wow. a, a um, here. You can see the edge of the of the box there. Yeah. Anyhow, so just a very <laughs> simple, very simple, very low key technology. Uh, I thought it was a nice contrast with, with what we're what we're talking about today. In the this ocean thermal energy conversion, in contrast, is a, is a very powerful technology with, with almost sort of earth-shaking possibilities. And just to get us started, let, let's talk a little bit about how sort of the underlying issue of how this works. Mm -hmm. the, the, it's got two temperatures of water. You're, you're using very cold water from deep in the ocean, mm -hmm. several yeah. thousand feet down, right? Uh -huh. And yes. warm surface water. Mm -hmm. And those two streams of water heat fluid in a closed, or fluid and gas in a closed system, right? Something like ammonia is typically used. Mm -hmm. And the point is that the ammonia is liquid at the temperature of the cold water, but mm -hmm. the gas at the temperature of the warm water, right? That's right. And so as you circulate it through the system with simple pumps, you can turn it into a gas, run turbines, condense it back into a liquid, pump yes. it up. Yes, it, uh, as I mentioned, it's a heat engine. Right. And, uh, and the heat engine has those particular ele elements in it, and it's really not that mysterious because we're using heat engines to generate our electricity now. Uh, the uh, oil-fired plant, a coal-fired plant, are a heat engine. You just use water as the working fluid, and you uh, use the fuel to boil the water and you use the steam uh, to run the turbine, and then you use the cold, uh, 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 cooling water, uh, to uh, liquefy the steam again and run it around to the beginning. So uh, it's, a, it's a heat engine. Uh -huh. a and uh, the deal with uh, the uh, OTEC is that you're dealing with another, uh, another range of temperatures there. Uh -huh. So you have to use a different working fluid, one that boils as you say, at the temperature of the uh, warm ocean water, and it uh, can uh, 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 get back to a liquid form uh, at the temperature of the cold ocean water. So it's a matter of choosing the right working fluid. And it happens that uh, the working fluid that you use in an OTEC plant is uh, essentially the same as working fluid that we use in our refrigerators. Right. And refrigerators are also a heat engine, except in that particular case, you're running it backwards. <laughs> you put the energy in, and uh, then you pick up the heat, uh, so to speak, from the inside of your refrigerator, and then you, uh, you compress that uh, vapor uh, to uh, to make it uh, uh, hot enough so that you can dump the heat into the cold source, which is your room, your kitchen, back of your, and so there it is, and then you run it back around again, and it takes up energy, okay. and, uh, and because you're pumping things against its natural gradient, but uh, in the, in the uh, in the heat engine for your producing power you take advantage of the natural gradient and then you run it forward, so to speak. And in fact, it's the same uh, working fluid. The, if you have a refrigeration system, a, a large scale, for instance, uh, and, and ice houses 
in uh, and bu uh, large butcher uh, systems, it, it runs on ammonia. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but you can use uh, a regular refrigerant like you have in a refrigerator. It used to be Freon, but we don't do that anymore because of the uh, the uh, uh, ozone hole uh, problem. But uh, still, it's the same working fluid. You could run uh, uh, an OTEC plant on uh, Freon, for example. And your uh, refrigeration unit or your cooler uh, in, in, in your car or your house uh, air conditioning system is in roughly the same range of temperatures as, 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 uh, as uh, an OTEC system. So again, simple engines like that, uh, you know, and, and you need a heat exchanger, you need a pump, and uh, you need a turbine, yeah. and uh, that's it, you know? So it's not that uh, OTEC runs on some sort of exotic technology <laughs> that we don't right. know about. Uh, the deal with OTEC is that it's big. Right, and the, yeah. the beauty of OTEC is that the heat source, in this case, is basically surface seawater, yes. which you've captured, in essence, yeah. the heat from the sun, and are just bleeding yes. that off, basically, bleeding that excess yeah. heat off. Turning it into electricity, yes. ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, turn it into electricity. But no, no fossil fuels need to be burned, no, uh, no. no uh, things need to be mined. No, uh, yeah. no, that's right. So, so last Wednesday, uh, we didn't get to uh, a whole lot of what we would like to get to right. uh, today and maybe have another yeah. session later but yeah. uh, you know we started talking about after the after the show mm -hmm. uh, about the fact that this uh, this in theory this has been around for a, a long time uh, it has it has grown and the technology has uh, matured and uh, we talked about the fact that uh, that we're we're ready to go do something with this now, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it looks like that a lot of things are coming together, mm -hmm. um, and especially the climate change situation, which uh, mm -hmm. is a big deal, uh, that, might, uh, that might accelerate this and, and actually make it happen and become mm -hmm. real in, in mm -hmm. our lifetimes. And uh, I, I, if you could go back and, and talk a little bit about where yeah. we are today, um, that, that I think that would be uh, insightful and uh, and help people to uh, understand that this is real technology that we might be using soon. Yeah, well, it's, it's sort of a historical accident uh, because uh, OTEC was thought of before the internal combustion engine, <laughs> so and it was more or less a you know uh, economic accident that we uh, discovered oil uh, there in Pennsylvania and. Uh, and uh, uh, combine that with uh, car development. First, uh, many first cars were actually electrical cars, but uh, 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 and and uh, it, it, that became uh, uh, our preferred pattern. But if we had uh, followed uh, uh, electricity first and uh, and uh, uh, used. Uh, um, used hydrogen because hydrogen was invented so to speak or discovered and the fuel cell was discovered in 1842 I believe or something like that mm -hmm. and uh, and if we had developed our transportation system with a hydrogen car which is very simple mm -hmm. again it's a simply uh, a, a fuel cell and an electric motor uh, and that's it you know it's uh, and if we had done that and built a whole economy on hydrogen as a fuel or uh, a direct electricity production from these sources, then we wouldn't have an oil age, you know? Mm -hmm. And suppose we did that and we came along now and we were happily going along in, in a hydrogen economy and somebody would come along and say, oh, let's, let's dig up this oil and make internal combustion engines Let's do that. Nobody would go but that sure, direction. It wouldn't uh, be economically. You know, and, and not only would it, it be economically, uh, we realize that oil is limited and uh, that if you spill oil, you have a problem. If you spill hydrogen, you don't really have a problem, uh, toxicity wise or otherwise. And uh, you run out, you know, you will run out at some point. 
and it's uh, you have to fight other people for it. You have wars and all kinds of things. So nobody would go that direction if we had uh, a hydrogen economy now. So to me, I see that as sort of an odd interlude in the development of the Earth. Is, you know, it's, 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 it's a bit like what Jared Diamond talks about in guns, yes. germs, and steel. It's sort of this exactly. weird accident of right. various yes. factors that just led to this course of development instead of that course of development. That's right. And if you look at uh, a, a sort of a historical, uh, you know, say we go 200 years into the future, and you go back and you say, now oh, there was a petroleum age. It lasted for 200 years. Okay. And, you know, then everybody saw <laughs> the error of their ways, and now we're back on track, right. you know. And wasn't that a strange time? <laughs> 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 they fought wars, right. and they had pollution, and, uh, you know, they, uh, they had global warming, which we're just now getting over, uh, you know, uh, in the future, they're uh, talking about. But uh, that's really it, you know. It, uh, that is a non-sustainable, uh, way of getting energy and uh, why is it so hard to change now because everything is built on right, that right. everybody's and, already and invested yeah in the and, and so you know we're used to it and we, right. we and like most things like that we can't conceive of not doing right. it that way because that's all we know right. but if you look at it from a more long-range perspective it's really an aberration it's not it's a it's a dead end you right. know yeah, yeah. inevitably well, yeah. uh, and, and also we, we talked about, uh, you know, the, the, you, you mentioned that the, the temperatures um, are actually uh, not that, far that apart, wide yeah. apart. Yeah. And so unlike uh, uh, fossil engine where you've got huge um, right. changes or in nuclear. temperature. <laughs> or nuclear. Uh, with, with this, you, you, you mentioned that it needed to be big. It needed to be yes. uh, sized up. So you're kind of trading the differential in temperature for volume. So you right. pump a lot of volume through this yeah. thing, and that's where that's, that's where, where the problem is. That's yeah. where the problem is because yes. it costs a lot just to build something just right. to show that it it's it big. works. You it's know? simple, but yeah. it works. So uh, yeah. This actually brought up a question when you when you mentioned that, and I got to wondering why why is there a, a volume a size a scale issue? Why can't you build a tabletop? Uh, seawater heat engine that would work well. Right. Well, you can. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, like I say, it's a simple heat engine, right. and you can just like you can have a little uh, a little hydrogen generator that sits on the, you know on your lab desk. Right. You know, in every high school laboratory class, uh, probably you know uh, makes hydrogen and shows it to, to the people and then uh, blows it up or something, you know. But uh, so it, it, it's, it's uh, a simple thing. But in, in terms of uh, uh, powering uh, a, uh, a city or something like sure, that, yeah. that uh, so uh, a central power station, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, in the case of, uh, you know, why can't you do it in your house? Well, you can't do it because you don't have a cold source. Uh, okay. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Uh, and, and if you have a cold source, you don't have a hot source. <laughs> and, you know, you right, say, right. okay, we're going to do this right. in, in Moscow, right. you know. So, well, yeah. you don't have a heat. Right, it works so well on the equator. We're going we're gonna to have to jump out and take a quick break right now, but okay. we'll be right back. Uh, Ethan Allen here with Ray Starling and Dr. Hans Kroc mm -hmm. talking about OTAC. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha. See you then. Aloha. I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us 
on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. With me today in the Think Tech studio is Dr. Hans Kroch and Ray Starling. We're talking about uh, OTEC, Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion. And during the break, our wonderful producer, Zuri, asked a, a good question for Hans, which was, well, what about the, the marine life, the, the fishes, the corals, the algae? Uh, mm -hmm. How is all that affected if, by your OTEC systems with the pulling the cold water out and dumping warm water back in and vice versa? Sure. Yeah, well, uh, what you're doing is pumping water around. And so uh, uh, you, uh, in the entrance of your pump, you want to, like in, like you would do in, in anything, uh, you would want to put a screen there to keep out, you know, fish, <laughs> for example. Uh, the, uh, uh, the small uh, uh, organisms, the uh, uh, algae, uh, micro, uh, you know, phytoplankton and zooplankton and whatnot, they go uh, through a heat exchanger, for example. Uh, generally, they uh, most of them make it through. That's not a problem. Uh, the the uh, organisms uh, that you pull up from the uh, deep ocean water, uh, you're taking the water from about a thousand meters down. Right. And if you look at uh, the tropical zone, that is uh, in the area uh, of the oxygen minimum. Uh, you're way below any uh, light, uh, light penetration, so you don't have any phytoplankton there to begin with. You do have bacteria, uh, 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 but relatively few. And you have uh, very few other macroorganisms there, because like I say, that's at the oxygen minimum. Uh, the ocean has fairly, uh, actually quite good oxygen content uh, for aerobic uh, organisms, fish and whatnot, uh, all macroorganisms are aerobic. Right. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, so they uh, their oxygen there comes from exchange with the air, and it also comes uh, from uh, phytoplankton uh, producing oxygen. Right. in the surface area. But that's only on the surface. That's on the surface. It's, and as, as you go down, some of the organic material starts uh, falling down, and the bacteria start eating that and using the ambient oxygen that, that's around there. And as it is, keeps on settling down, uh, there's a, there's a, they, they eat that up, and they use up the oxygen. And in, in the course of things, uh, they... Uh, 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 there's a minimum in the uh, in, in the depth, and that happens around, uh, depending where you are exactly, but 700 meters, 1,000 meters, uh, 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 that that level. And you, uh, and this is where uh, we are taking the cold water, and that's where you have the minimum of fish life, or uh, you're not. You're not taking this from the bottom, okay. and so you don't have benthic organisms. You don't have crabs and whatnot uh, okay. wandering around there, uh, and so you just have mid-water organisms, and they're generally trying to pass through the zone quickly because they can't breathe, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't have uh, enough oxygen. So, mm -hmm. uh, still, y you'd want to put a screen on a sure. pump, for instance. And uh, 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 and that wasn't done, incidentally, in in the uh, larger pipes that were uh, uh, supplying the water at the Natural Energy Laboratory of Hawaii in Kona, and uh, uh, that uh, set of pipes was fairly near the bottom mm -hmm. because uh, they are land-based, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, had the same thought. They said, "Well, you know, at the oxygen minimum." not going to be very many things here, but uh, there were some, uh, you know, uh, bottom-dwelling organisms and, uh, and some uh, rays, you know, some stingray-like, uh, uh, it wasn't exactly stingray, mm -hmm. but rays like that, and they came up the pipe, <laughs> and, uh, and they died, and there were also some shrimp and whatnot, mm -hmm. so uh, 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 died in the in the wet wells so to speak right. uh, because uh, and so that was a little bit of a surprise to people 
but uh, they can be easily screened. Sure, out. yeah, you could do yeah. a set of very, very right. coarse screen, finer screen, finer right. screen. If, if you need yeah. to do that. Yeah. And, and, and my particular design that I'm uh, proposing for uh, large floating plants is I would put the pump at the bottom. Right, we talked a little bit last week about this and the advantages of having your pump down at the bottom and yeah. that allows you to use a flexible pipe, right? right? right. Yes, exactly, and it's a lot cheaper and, uh, and uh, with a modular construction, it's within the range of things that we can build today and so this is a doable thing. But uh, the, inlet, the inlet to that pump, just like the inlet to the warm water pump at the surface, you would put a screen on right. so you uh, so you exclude uh, uh, organisms and uh, th th those bacteria that would come up would uh, generally die mm -hmm. you know because they are subject to pr uh, pressure down there you release the pressure and a lot of them would lice sure. uh, which means they right. blow Explode. up right. uh, <laughs> and that that's particularly uh, um, um, uh, obvious when uh, when we were doing open cycle OTEC because in that case you were actually subjecting the water to vacuum conditions oh, okay. so that even the warm water sure. would, uh, bacteria would lice sure. uh, uh, and that would mean that the discharge from the OTEC plant uh, basically uh, uh, for an open cycle uh, would kill the bacteria now um, that isn't a big Problem, right. uh, because uh, the uh, because the bacteria, when you put the um, uh, water back into the ocean, uh, you back basically have the building blocks all spread out right. for bacteria, <laughs> uh, because the uh, and uh, and then you they right. not the same ones, but they get rebuilt so thing, to speak, you know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and bacterial life, right. uh, you know, isn't going to get wiped out. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, uh, not anytime soon. <laughs> not uh, with that process right. in a, any case. I've got uh, yes. a, a quick question. Uh, you, you know, the when you're talking about free e energy, which mm -hmm. is what what OTEC would be, it's mm -hmm. free. The the, the, the fuel itself mm -hmm. is comes from the sun. Um, you don't worry too much about efficiency, but just for mm -hmm. thinking purposes, what what how much do you have to make uh, in terms of um, electricity to be able to uh, to put to run the, run, the, run the system mm -hmm. yes to, yes yes uh, and, and that that varies with size and that's one of the advantages of doing it Big. large yeah so okay. in in our uh, system that we're talking about where we have modules of um, 20 25 megawatt size uh, as opposed to, for instance, the one megawatt uh, OTEC one ship, or the the uh, OT, uh, the mini OTEC, the, which was a few hundred uh, or tens or uh, hundred kilowatts mm -hmm. size, you know, there uh, the efficiency wasn't good. You know, you, you would. Uh, uh, the efficiency in, in the sense that how much does it need to run your pumps and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's the net amount there. Uh, it, it was, uh, 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 you, you, we ended up getting, uh, I say we, but uh, the people who were doing it at the time because I wasn't on that barge, uh, 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 where uh, uh, you would only get like 50 kilowatts and you had to, uh, uh, I think, uh, deal with 200 kilowatts at the beginning and you right, the rest right, were, right. Uh, in the but case. But again, the fuel is free, is yes. Right, right. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in, in a larger plant such as, for instance, what's shown here with a 20, 25 megawatt, uh, there uh, you get a net production of 85 percent. You only use 15 percent oh, wow. to run wow. the entire okay. system, yeah. so that's very that's good. Yeah, yeah that's you know. So and and getting up there with a fossil fuel plant. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, right. But uh, a problem is, and an objection has been to uh, with uh, by people who say, "Oh, this is uh, this is." Um, inefficient uh, uh, so right. it's not uh, 
uh, inefficient in the Carnot cycle, mm. say, you know. Well, uh, people who study these kinds of things, people doing thermodynamics and whatnot, of course, Carnot is, is, a, is, a, it is a tool uh, to evaluate things. Now, the Carnot cycle efficiency assumes that, uh, that when you get through with things, that you are at absolute zero. In other words, you are 100% uh, uh, Carnot efficiency would mean that you take every bit of the energy, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. bit of the heat out of your uh, working fluid or fluid that you're dealing with, and you end up with a absolute zero. Of course, that never happens. That <laughs> never happens. Radical, right? So <laughs> the, the Carnot uh, efficiency is really uh, the maximum that you, you can get um, uh, w given the delta T that you're dealing with mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. case. So it's the ratio of your available mm -hmm. delta T to the absolute zero temp. Uh, right. I mean, uh, where, where your, your, your uh, Kelvin degree uh, temperature. So it's, it's, it's a theoretical okay. thing that we're not really talking about. For instance, the Carnot efficiency of a hurricane is the same as a, as a Carnot mm -hmm. efficiency of, of a, a, a OTEC engine. Mm -hmm. Carnot efficiency of a, of a windmill is even less than the Carnot efficiency mm -hmm. of an OTEC plant, mm -hmm. you know, because there you're talking about, you know, how, well, what's the, what's the energy in the, in in the downstream right. from the wind yeah. uh, mill, right. you know, relative to absolute right. zero where you have, uh, you know, solid air behind, you know, so, so to speak. So to wrap, silly. Sort of to wrap this up then, you've got this technology that's uh, available today. There's nothing that really has to be developed new for it. No new materials, nope. no new ideas in some sense. You've got a technology that can Bar, sort of borrow or use an existing heat source that's far in excess of what we ever could possibly use. 10,000 times right. as big, yes. That essentially is non-polluting, mm -hmm. uh, indeed actually helps reduce the, the warming of the oceans and right. reduce the acidification of the oceans too. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, does apparently minimal harm to any uh, life in the oceans right. and produces uh, fresh water and electricity if you want the, uh, I mean hydrogen if you want to, as yes. sort of side products. Yes. So, what, what's not going here? Exactly. What am I missing? <laughs> uh, well, uh, you're missing uh, uh, the fact that we're not doing it now right. and therefore we don't want to do so, it because that's it. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, that's what we, I think we need to close on here is we all should get behind this. This is really, I mean, yeah. it really is a phenomenally I, good I idea. I absolutely agree. Yeah, I think we should be calling attention to our, uh, our leaders about this as an option and, and really mm -hmm. talking this up. And I want to do so some more, but uh, we're out of time right now. Uh. So we're going to uh, have to talk some more later on. Uh, I'm your host, Ethan Allen. You've been here on Lakeable Science. Ray Starling and Dr. Hans Kroc. Thank you both for being here.